Hey guys, welcome back to Zane Customs. In this week's episode, I'm going to be sculpting Hero Brian. I'm starting to sculpt off with my old Steve model, um, and that's just because Hero Brian. For those of you who already know, you know that Hero Brian is basically the same exact model as Steve with just white glowing eyes. And for those of you who don't know, Hero Brian is like a Minecraft urban legend. It's Something that doesn't really exist in the game, never has, and probably never will. Regardless of that though, the entire Minecraft community uh, quick, quickly became a big fan of Hero Brian and even Mojang, the developers of Minecraft, leave a lot of easter eggs in their game about Hero Brian, but he, he has never been in the game. He was first introduced to the world through this picture that was posted on 4chan in 2010. And the, the, the person that posted this picture claimed that they were just going about in their Minecraft world when suddenly a, a random mob showed up and, you know, they posted this picture of what is now considered Hero Brian, which is just Steve with a retextured face to have these white eyes. And after this picture was posted and the entire community became enamored with Hero Brian, there became a lot of theories coming out and uh, now... What most people consider to be uh, canonical lore for Hero Brian is that he is the dead brother of Notch, which is the code name for the the guy that created Minecraft. And, and of course, you know n none of that's real. But uh, a lot of people quickly, like I like I mentioned, quickly became obsessed with Hero Brian. And I, there's people out there that believe that he is part of the game, and it, you know you you might be able to see him if you're lucky and. And if, if he's not part of the game, that he will be at some point. But uh, more than likely, he's never going to be added to the game. He's just an Easter egg at this point. But as far as my purposes go, um, I just thought it would be cool to sculpt Hero Brian because I really like the idea of these big white glowing eyes and the really creepy aesthetic that Hero Brian has going on. And with my my entire Minecraft series, but mostly my Steve series, I've been doing, um, I've, I've been trying to tell a story with it. So. My first sculpt of Steve is kind of him washed up on the beach and, you know, he's just got his regular clothes and a wooden pickaxe and then the next in the series he's got leather armor and a stone sword and he's like slowly upgrading his uh, his way throughout this world. And I, I wanted this to kind of be part of that. So I, wa I wanted this Steve, or this Hero Brian, excuse me, to be really creepy and even though he's uh, very similar to Steve as far as clothing and looks I, I still wanted him to look uh, uh, very very different at the same time if that makes sense so one of the things I'm doing right off the bat you guys can tell is uh, he, he's got much bigger eyes unrealistically so just big creepy eyes and also um, his hair is kind of flying up and he's in this kind of screaming pose and I really wanted to take on the ethereal aspect of Hero Brian and you know the kind of creepy uncertain uncertainty that a lot of people have with Hero Brian and so in in this sculpture he's kind of float in with um, this kind of mystical aura around him and glowing eyes and there's no real lore out there that supports this I just thought it would be cool um, but but also there's a few other things I did to help set him apart from Steve uh, for one he still is shoeless he's just walking around barefoot like like Steve was um, but but I think that fits and you know kind of helps the creepiness of him and uh, he, he's he's meant to be kind of a wild mob that's just out there in the wild so the the idea that he's one with nature and doesn't really wear shoes I think that fit but also when it comes to his clothing I, I tried to make him pristine which is very different from Steve because I, I try to make him look dirty and grimy and you know as I'm slowly upgrading him he's got tears and cuts throughout his shirt and even blood stains because of all the skeletons and zombies he's had to fight and just different things like this I want but I wanted Herobrine again to be different from him so I tried to make his clothing look pristine but at the same time you'll see when I end up coloring this this model at the end uh, the colors are still very faded and uh, very different that way and uh, even though I can't really make this this model float because you know if I were to print it out it'd be a physical piece I'd have to have it be supported somehow um, so that's why I decided to have his 
him kind of tippy tone here, like he's slowly starting to lift off the ground. But I, I, I still wanted it to look like he was floating. So I tried to, as much as possible, make the sculpt look like he was weight weightless and just like slowly floating up, but still had uh, his body attached to the ground through his feet, just so that if I, if I do ever print this model out, it'll actually be able to stand on the base, and you know I won't have to have some sort of clear acrylic rods or anything like that holding it up. And do, doing this sculpt was actually a lot of fun because every time I go in to do a, an upgraded version of Steve, uh, you know, upgrading from leather armor to to iron armor or whatever, I, I mostly just focus on that, on the armor aspect of it. But when it came to this one, I, I focus a lot more on his face and his hair and his, his actual anatomy, uh, which was a lot of fun because I still feel like there's, there's certain parts of Steve's model that don't look so good like when I first sculpted it I spent a lot of time on it and I was really happy with it but looking back on it now um, o only a few short short months later I'm already seeing problems I had and things that I already do so much better so it's fun to kind of use this as an opportunity to to fix the anatomy and anything that's disproportionate go in and just make it look a lot better and uh, his hair and his face are two things in particular I think his hair Steve's hair was pretty basic and just not that cool because I wasn't really focused on it. I didn't think it was a huge aspect um, of the model as a whole. I was just focused on other things. And same with his face. I was really focused on his face actually, but I, it just wasn't didn't turn out as good as I was hoping. So this time around, I spent a lot more time focusing on his face and having him kind of in this screaming uh, position with his mouth definitely forced me to spend a little bit more time on it to make sure it looked good and didn't look weird. But even beyond that, I think I, I definitely think the anatomy looks better on this sculpt versus the Steve. But even the the clothing, the wrinkles on his pants, the way all of it turned out, I think it just turned out so much better, and more realistic, and and it was a lot easier in certain aspects, like here when it comes to the hands, because I again was going for that really creepy, um, unnatural pose, so I was able to to make a lot of hard, sharp angles with his fingers and his wrists and stuff to to put his hands into some weird angles and that stuff just comes naturally to me it's a lot easier to sculpt and it's more dynamic whereas the Steve uh, his hands are just kind of basic they're just kind of standing there you know he's got one hand wrapped around a, a pickaxe but other than that it's just kind of basic and w which is what I wanted but it's, it's just harder for me to to make something look interesting when when I'm going for a more simple basic pose like that and because I was able to start this sculpt off with a pre-existing sculpt, the, the Steve one again, I, I was able to spend more time on refinement, which is something I've, I've really been trying to do with most of my sculpts, but I, I put out a video every week, so a lot of times I, I run out of time, and you know I just have to put the video out. So being able to, to do this, I already had the base sculpt done. All I had to do was really re reposition them and warp some things and... You know, in the end, there's a lot of things turned out different uh, or drastically different, like his face and the position of his shirt and things like that. But overall, it's pretty similar to the original Steve sculpt. So there wasn't a ton of work get into this position. And then I was able to spend most of my time on refinement and just making everything look good. And it's definitely a good exercise as well because, like I said, I I don't generally spend a lot of time refining my sculpts as much as I would like because I just have to move on to the next sculpt, move on to the next video. So being able to actually spend a lot of time and really try to flesh out a sculpt like this was definitely really good practice and something I, 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 I try to do with every sculpt as much as possible, but unfortunately it just doesn't happen as much as I would like. But I think it it definitely is worth it because I could go back and show you my sculpt for Steve that I've done and compare it to this new Hero Brian sculpt, and everything about this one is just so much better. And and like I said earlier in the video, that is partially just from me getting better. You know, I feel like every week, every month, every every day I work on sculpting, I'm slowly getting better, and that's definitely part of it. But uh, just being able to spend the time refining make something look so much better 
And honestly, the the aspect of the sculpt I struggled with the most this time around was probably the hair. Hair is just something that is tough for me. I, I don't know why I just struggle with it so much. And I can never make it look as good as I want. I, I was really happy with the way it's looking right here. Just the base layout for the strands and, you know, having his hair kind of floating up. Uh, like I mentioned, I want that kind of weightless look to the body. I think having the hair floating up really helped that. But once it came to texturing the hair and making it look like like it's actually hair and made out of a bunch of individual little pieces, uh, I struggle with that. I just don't don't have a really good way of doing it. I think I just need to look up a lot more reference photos and watch some tutorials or something. But hair is something that I struggle with uh, pretty heavy. I mean that aside from hands and faces, which I've, I've mentioned a lot that those are the hardest for me to sculpt. I actually feel like I'm starting to get better at hands, but hair was like one one of those aspects that I didn't really think about, so it was surprising how hard it was for me to sculpt. When I first got into sculpting, I knew that hands and the faces in particular were going to be hard uh, because when I, when I was drawing, those were the big struggles for me as well, so... I knew that was going to be difficult, but hair I didn't really think about being uh, as big of a struggle as it has been. And I'm actually really happy with the way the hands turned out in the sculpt. Again, it was pretty simple because I already had the basic layout, but even going in and repositioning, there were certain things that I had to adjust, like the thicknesses of the fingers that were off in the original Steve sculpt, and just different things like that that made them look a lot better in this sculpt. And one thing I actually considered was not texturing any of the the fabric he's wearing because I, I did go ahead and texture the the shirt and the pants when I did the Steve model. But like 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 I mentioned, I was trying to make this guy look off and just weird and make things look different. So I, I considered that for a while, just not texturing it just to have a little bit of variation. But I decided to texture it because it, it was looking a little too cartoony when I left it especially after I started getting these colors in and this is something you guys might not be able to tell unless I do a side-by-side -side of him and Steve but the colors on Hero Bright are a lot more faded his skin tone everything um, I wanted him to look like malnutritioned or something just like unnatural and even the color of his shirt and all that to look like the color has been kind of fading out of it And this is actually the second time I've done uh, someone's face like this in this kind of yelling scream position. Uh, the first one being a Wolverine that I sculpted uh, quite a few months ago now. And I think this one turned out better. The, the Wolverine one is disproportionate in certain areas. And I don't think the teeth turned out as good as I was hoping. And Not, not that I spent an insane amount of time doing uh, the teeth on Herobrine or the tongue or anything like that. Like... It's pretty basic. I just think it looks better here than it did on the Wolverine. And then here, this is what I was mentioning earlier. I went ahead and put in a, a nice fabric texture on the shirt. And here I'm doing the sleeves. And I eventually go ahead and do the pants as well. Um, yeah, I, I was kind of going back and forth, like I said. But I decided to do it because I didn't want it to look too cartoony. One problem I have with a lot of my sculpts is... The texturing phase and the coloring phase I feel like I, a lot of times I'm really happy with the way it's turning out and then once I start texturing and coloring things start not to look as well as I'm hoping they're gonna go you know this one's kind of similar um, that there's definitely a certain aspect of the coloring that I wasn't super happy about and I, I could have really brought out a lot of the texture and a lot of the details if I started to add in some dirt and grime and into the cracks and crevices of his pants and his fingers and things like that but again I wanted him to to look pristine and unnatural so I didn't end up doing that and also part of the reason that I I left the coloring on here by the way I did is because I was gonna go ahead and use those photos in uh, the thumbnails for this video and uh, any pictures that I'm gonna post of, of the hero Brian and I wanted to add kind of a glowing effect to him because I have his eyes white here and I kind of am imagining that his eyes are glow, but I also wanted this kind of ethereal white glow around his body. So I think leaving his colors kind of drab and basic like this really helped uh, 
sell that very well. But yeah, that's the entire sculpt right there. I'm really happy with the way this one turned out. I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. If you liked my, you know, a little bit more fantastical take on Hero Brian, it was definitely a lot of fun to do. And yeah, uh, let, let me know in the comments what you guys think. If there's anything you want to see me sculpt in the future, whether it's Minecraft mobs or, you know, anything else, let me know. I, I do a lot of different stuff on this channel and I'll definitely try and sculpt anything that anybody recommends. And also, I just want to say thanks so much for everybody who watches my videos, comment, subscribe, like, anything like that helps me out a ton and I super appreciate it. But most of all, I just want to say thank you again for watching and I'll see you next week.